Hello, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Front Mission 5, Scars of the War. And uh, in this episode, we are going for yet another Vonzer Roundup. Uh, we're going to begin with the iconic Zenith, uh, which is, of course, one of my favorite Vonzer models, and a uh, fan favorite, I'm, I'm sure. So... The Zenith was developed by the Australian Vonzer manufacturer Jade Metal Lyman prior to the Second Huffman conflict as the company's main battle Vonzer. In the decade following its initial deployment, it underwent a number of improvements but retained its broad shoulder armor, which you can see here, um, and distinctive exterior. The original Zenith model featured a lightweight body and a trio of talons. Uh, it's not so much a talon in the back there compared to, say, what you see on the Rexon, but there still is that stabilizer you can see at the back on the rear of its foot. Um, on its feet to provide enhanced stability, but this feature hindered the Zenith's mobility and therefore its adoption. During the Second Huffman conflict, it was used almost exclusively by reconnaissance units. These deficiencies uh, were addressed in the Zenith 5. So, one thing I wanted to mention about the Zenith is that it's kind of unique um, in terms of the Bonzers that you see in Front Mission 5. Uh, one pattern you might have noticed when I was doing these roundup videos is that many of the Vonzers you see in um, Front Mission 5 are actually improved variations on previous models. And those models typically showed up in uh, Front Mission 1, Front Mission 4, and Front Mission Online. Uh, but they're not included in Front Mission 5. You only really get the kind of finished product. Uh, but in the case of the Zenith, you actually get the kind of unsuccessful experimental model um, to begin with. And that is a little bit unique, um, but there is actually um, a, another model that is a kind of cousin to the Zenith, which is the Zora series. Um, and the Zora series looks quite similar to the uh, Zenith. But you can only find that in Front Mission 1, Front Mission 4, and Front Mission Online. Uh, you can't find that in Front Mission 5. So we do get the kind of janky original Zenith. In fact, this is the only Zenith we'll be able to use in our normal playthrough of the game. Um, we will not have access to the Zenith 5, sadly. Uh, but... Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of nice to have in the game, right? It's, it's kind of cool to see this is the original Zenith. Um, and I tried to use this color here to model um, this Zenith on uh, Ryuji's color in Front Mission 1. Because he uses a Zenith. So, yeah, so then we have the Zenith 5. Looks quite different, doesn't it? Um, much beefier. So, uh, the deficiencies of the Zenith were addressed in the Zenith 5, which was designed to restore Jade Metal Lyman's reputation after the poor reception of its Zora series. Uh, and the Zora was the first WAP or Bonser series that uh, Jade Metal Lyman produced. Um, out of the many Bonser models developed during the Second Huffman Conflict, Zenith 5 boasts the best high-spec and uh, best balanced body parts. So it, it exceeds in all categories and is balanced well across all categories as well. Um, and this caused it to be selected as the OCU GDF's main battle Vonzer. But this is where um, there's a little bit of a problem in the information that you can find on Tenmo. Um, either my Japanese is not good enough to understand exactly what they're saying, or there was some kind of 
translation, or, or I shouldn't say translation, but a transcription problem um, from the sources they were using. And I, and I think that might be the case because there are some typos in the text, but there's really contradictory things that are said there. So on the one hand, they say that the Xena 5 was selected as the OCUGDF's main bottle, battle vonzer, but on the other hand, they say that um, it actually wasn't that successful at market because the balanced uh, Vonzer uh, category, you could say, or the, the demand for balanced Vonzers had already been captured by Cicada Industries at the time that the Xena 5 was uh, finally released. And um, so there is some talk about it being adopted by the, um, the OCU Marines, uh, the Marine Defense Force. But it's, it's really kind of confused and contradictory. So I can't really tell you one way or the other whether it actually was widely adopted or was not widely adopted. Um, so if it was widely adopted, I would say that that was likely only the case for the federal uh, defense forces of the OCU because you don't really see it um, being used at all in uh, From Mission 2 by the uh, Alardeshi forces, like, or I should say the, like the stock, um, okay, yeah, there is a Alardeshi OCU force, um, and that is what your characters belong to at the beginning of the game, and they're not equipped with Xena 5s, okay? And you don't see Xena 5s very often in that game. And that is the game that has the most um, expo or gives us the most exposure to all the different branches of the OCU military. Um, so, yeah, I'm kind of on the fence about this. Like, which way is the, like, which is the correct interpretation? Because the, the data there is just so mixed up and confusing. Um, anyhow... This uh, design here, I just, you know, thought it looked cool, this geometric pattern. I think it looks nice with this kind of almost like a rock golem sort of look that uh, the Xena 5 has. And then I equipped it with a nice Gatling gun. Alright, and then uh, finally, we have the Shockall. And the Shockall, this kind of weird alien looking thing. Um, is a lightweight, high-spec model manufactured by the mysterious Intergehen Corporation. And it was manufactured primarily with unmanned use in mind, but for um, times when the Shakal was not under remote control or was being transported, it was also equipped with basic piloting facilities. Um, and some Shakal models were further enhanced for use with the S device. Now, um, there's a kind of a pattern to the data that I have for this uh, week or this episode in that um, there's, there's kind of inconsistencies and errors in what you can find. And this error is actually noted by the Tenmo site, which is um, in the World Historica, it says that some Shakal models were manufactured in the USN by Diablo Avionics um, and were used for airport defense. But this seems to be a misunderstanding of the plot from Front Mission 5, um, because the shockalls that we saw in, I think it was Mission 16, the airport defense mission, or the hostage rescue mission at the airport, um, were actually not um, on the USN side. They were on the guerrilla, or the terrorist side. So it's actually perfectly consistent um, for the terrorists to be using shockalls, um, and there's really no need to uh, go ahead and sort of retcon the whole thing. So that, that was a, a problem, a continuity problem, or a world building problem that was noted by the uh, World Historica people. Or sorry, the uh, Tenmo people. And uh, I actually have a model of this Bonzo, and uh, I like the little buggy eyes on the head there torso is also its head. That's kind of one of the interesting things about it. It sort of looks like a weird frogman thing. 
Um, I like this design quite a lot. The one I have is kind of purple and light purple. Um, but I, I thought, hey, you know, this is a Vonzer that you see um, quite frequently in Front Mission 2. So I went ahead and used some forest camo pattern because, uh, um, you know, I could see it fighting in the jungles of Alardesh. Maybe this isn't exactly the best jungle camo, um, but the only jungle camo I had was the USN jungle camo, and those enemies sure as heck weren't using the USN jungle camo in that game. Uh, right, so finally we have the ASA 9X, and I apologize for this uh, kind of crappy image, but it was really hard to get a good screen capture that uh, gave us a good look at this um, model. Uh, the ASA 9X was developed by Fortune Medical as a test machine for collecting data on Vonzer control systems. Uh, strictly speaking, it cannot be called a Vonzer, as its leg systems were not yet uh, developed at the time that the Strike Wyverns encountered the unit. So remember, uh, the weird German name for uh, Vonzers, like the full name, is means something to the effect of like walking tank. Uh, so, because this has no legs, you can't really call it a Vonzer. Um, it was equipped with an S device and was used to narrow the gap between humans and Vonzer control systems. And because it was not designed for combat, it was lacking in both durability and mobility. But despite these shortcomings, it still put up quite a fight when attacked by the Strike Wyverns. There's not a whole lot of information about this model in the World Historica, but I was able to dig up that much. Um, and speaking of, you know, Fortune Medical and the relationship between medical research and military research slash robotics research slash um, mecha research, uh, I found this interesting story, news story that was, uh, I think it was released, what, yesterday? No, it was released uh, five days ago um, by the uh, Army Research Lab, U.S. Army Research Lab Public Affairs, um, and it was about a um, system called MaxFAS, uh, which you can look up yourself, M-A-X-F-A-S. Uh, you probably heard this in the tech news if you are a tech news listener or watcher, uh, but... I thought I would mention this because it seems so, uh, you know, pertinent to the whole S device thing and all the kind of science fiction that we see in Front Mission Five. Um, so, right, uh, the Max Fass is a mechatronic arm exoskeleton um, used to train new soldiers to reach shooting proficiency faster, and uh, that's not the only function it has, uh, but. Um, that is the primary use case that is being thought of by uh, the Army Research Laboratory engineer, uh, Dan Bachel. Um, he's like the mechanical en engineer uh, who developed this system. And uh, Bachel actually said that he has a childhood fascination with robotics and exoskeletons since he first saw Caterpillar's power loader full body exoskeleton from the film Aliens. So. Like, this is, you know, uh, life imitating art, right? Um, basically, we have the idea of giant robots, giant robot suits or exoskeletons or mecha, um, and this is inspiring engineers to develop actual uh, usable exoskeletons um, that are being, you know, or will probably be used quite shortly uh, by, you know, actual soldiers being deployed by the US military. Um, of course, we don't have any, um, you know, shady human experimentation uh, involved in this. Uh, but there are some other parallels to what you see in Front Mission 5. Um, so, um, the MaxFast system, uh, it was originally modeled on a robotic device used to train arm motion of stroke victims. Right? So... You know, Fortune Medical, like there was some comment on the on the something awful forums about how, uh, like Fortune Medical was 
transferring medical research in giant robots over to military applications. Well, actually, this medical military connection seems to be, be like becoming more and more common. I mean, that isn't terribly surprising because um, the U.S. military is the largest institution in the world, and it is a massive funder of all kinds of research. Um, so that isn't terribly surprising, but it is nevertheless interesting. Um, and the MaxFast system, uh, like, isn't only designed to train soldiers how to shoot. Like, the idea is basically that um, it will hold your arm in a proper posture to fire, um, and so then your body will learn to hold that posture, and with when you remove the max fast, um, you will still be able to shoot at a higher skill level than you would be able to um, if you were simply looking at an instructor and having the instructor, you know, move your arm um, into the proper position in order to learn how to uh, fire a pistol, or I guess you could use this for a rifle as well. Um, the image that they have there is of a pistol, though. So, um, the MaxFast is made of carbon fiber to make it very light, and um, it could possibly be used in the future uh, by normal soldiers, um, because it, uh, you know, he, he says, uh, Bashel believes the project uh, he has been working on for the last year has a chance because fatigue, involuntary tremors in the arm, and difficult situations like shooting under fire or shooting on the move will continue to degrade shooting performance in soldiers, even as more advanced weapons technology emerges. Uh, he says, a quote from him, My vision is that one day a more mature version of MaxFast could be used to improve aim on the battlefield despite any adverse conditions. So, uh, you know, life uh, imitates art. Life imitates science fiction. Science fiction becomes science fact. How about that? Um, so, you know, maybe Fortune Medical, even if the secret facility and human experimentation things are a little bit far-fetched, uh, isn't too far from the truth. So that is my little digression about that, but I thought it was some interesting news that related to uh, the Front Mission series and its science fiction. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this Bonsai Roundup. Um, some really cool models we got to look at today. And I will have the next video out hmm, maybe in a week. Uh, things are pretty busy over here. Uh, with, I'm doing some job hunting. So trying to get the videos out, uh, but this is just a busy time of year. Um, so, you know, have patience and uh, I will see you next time.